it's not what you can take, it's what you can do. And these are the questions I get all day and the answers I'm going to give you. Changes that are going on in healthcare. Hi, I'm Dr. Bill Sears. Welcome to my doctor's office. I'd like you all to sit back at all ages. This program is, is a program for all ages today. And I want you to imagine that you're coming into my office. It's flu season, it's winter season, and these are the questions I get all day and the answers I'm gonna give you. First of all, imagine you come in, you say, doctor, it's flu season, what can I take? And immediately I change the topic into, it's not what you can take, it's what you can do. And I call this the pills and skills model of healthcare. This is what you're gonna to learn today. It's doctor, what can I take? The pills. Doctor, what can I do? And these are the self-help skills. And did you realize the marvelous design of our body that God made? that God put within our body a giant walking pharmacy. Inside your body is this pharmacy that's open 24-7, and it makes just about, not all, but just about all the medicines you're ever going to need. And these medicines are custom made just for you. They come out at the right time, at the right dose, no side effects, and they're free. And so let's talk about, first of all, building your immune system for winter time, the winter flu, the illnesses. And I call this the five S's. Seafood, smoothies, salads, spices, and supplements. Those are the five S's to build your immune system. And again, that's the skills. That is the doctor, what can I do? Not so much, what can I take? So let's go through those five S's. First of all, seafood. Salmon, for example. Go fish. The two magic words of building your immune system. Now, seafood, it's not only, it's good for what we call the head to toe nutrient. The omega-3 oils in seafood, they're good for the brain, they're good for the eyes, they're good for the gums, they're good for the skin, they're good for the heart, they're good for the joints, the gut. We call this, as doctors, we call seafood, or fish, omega-3s, the head-to-toe nutrient. So the first tip, the first S, is go fish. Secondly, salads. God put fruits and vegetables on this earth because they build our natural immune system. What makes a tomato red? A blueberry blue. Those are called phytos. Phytos are nutrients. They're immune boosters. And for the kids, I say phytos fight disease. You remember the old video game, Pac-Man? Within our, our body, there are millions of little cells, white cells, like Pac-Man. And the Pac-Man, they go through our bloodstream and they eat up the germs. Fruits and vegetables. Phytos, we call them, feed the Pac-Men so they can eat up germs. So you got seafood and salads, the first S, two S's. Smoothies. Begin the day with a fruit and yogurt smoothie. I do that in my office all the time. I start the day with a big smoothie. Uh, fruit, like vegetable, like um, blueberries and raspberries and strawberries, whatever in season. P uh, pomegranates. Pomegranates are great today. You can, you can get them now. Pomegranates are in season during flu season. What a great design. So you could chop up all the fruits and vegetables, yogurt, ground up flaxseed, add, a, add a, a protein supplement if you wish, and start the day with a big giant smoothie, a great immune booster. Okay. The next S is spices, like turmeric. Turmeric and black pepper is a great combination to build your immune system. And the final S, I'll review that for you, 
we have seafood, salads, smoothies, spices, and supplements. The two best supplements to take to build your immune system, especially during flu season, are omega-3s and any fruit and vegetable extract. You can get these wonderful fruit and vegetable extracts in capsules. So omega-3s and fruit and vegetable extracts. So those are the five S's to build your immune system. And I must say this to parents, and, and at all ages, really, three or four times a day, the pills and skills doctor not only what can I take, but what can I do. Now, a couple other little tips. The, uh, let's, let's go shopping for a minute. And grandparents out there and parents, take your kids shopping. Use the supermarket as a giant nutritional classroom. It's fun. Kids love it. So just imagine you're walking with Dr. Bill into the, into the supermarket, and I'm with my grandson. And first of all, we go in, and the first tip is we shop the perimeter. Why, Grandpa? That's because that's where the grow foods are. And notice I don't call them healthy foods because for kids, healthy is icky sometimes. I call them grow foods. If they're into football, football foods. If they're into soccer, soccer foods, cheerleading foods, whatever they're into. Shop the perimeter. And then you can play some games, like go over to the, to the bread aisle. And this is my favorite. And you pick up the, the junkiest, softest, whitest, squeeziest, squishy bread. And then you pick up the healthiest whole grain, whole wheat, firm bread, and you have your child hold one in one hand and one in the other. And you say, okay, now tell me what that white bread feels like. We call it air bread. What does it feel like? Well, Grandpa, it's squishy, and it's kind of light. I said, well, and what's this feel like? Well, the, the, the whole wheat bread is firm, and it's kind of heavy. I said, okay, Susie, do you want your muscles to feel strong and firm? like the whole wheat bread, are squishy and weak like the air bread. And they get it. Now they realize why mom said, eat your wheat bread, your whole wheat bread. And another fun place to go in the supermarket is over to the meat and fish aisle. And remember, kids are visual learners. And it's not enough just to say, OK, I want you to eat your fruits and vegetables. You've got to tell them why. So you go over to the meat aisle, and you say, OK, there's a big piece of steak. And you see all that, that white stuff on the steak? That we call sticky stuff. And that is what makes your muscle weak. And there's a steak, a muscle, from an animal that sat around and ate chunk food all day. And look at the piece of salmon. That salmon is strong looking, not a lot of white sticky stuff on it. That animal swam and exercised and ate good food all day. What do you want your muscles to look like? The animal sat around a pen all day and ate chunk food? Or the animal that swam and ran and exercised and ate good food all day? Kids will get it. Oh, I want my muscles to look like that, that healthy one. And another, way you can play, uh, another game you can play with your kids in the supermarket is, I spy with my little eyes the bad word on the label, and I give, them, I give them in my office what I call the three bad words on the food label. High fructose corn syrup, hydrogenated, kids love to pronounce that, and anything with a number on it, like red number 40, blue number 5. And they'll go and say, oh, look, Grandpa, I found it has a bad word on the label. In fact, in my office, I, I teach that at beginning at five years of age, I give kids a list of the bad words on the food label. And then I tell them to play a game. Now, go home tonight and take out, and here are the three bad words. High fructose corn syrup, hydrogenated, and anything with a number symbol on it, like red number 40. And you take out all the food in your pantry and your fridge that has a bad word on the label. And you put in a box, and Daddy has to give you a dollar for every bad word you find. And the kids love it, and the moms love it, because it's a great way to get dads to, to, to eat better. Now, a, a, another tip that I love to play with kids 
is besides the I spy with my little eyes. I, I have them sort of play, um, imagine, imagine what you, what you eat. I call it my sticky stuff theory of disease. St uh, aging, my sticky stuff theory of healthy aging. You put sticky stuff in your mouth, you get sticky stuff in your blood vessels. So I'm going to take you now inside your blood vessels and show you some Nobel Prize winning research, which I know most of you have never heard before. In fact, it's new to many doctors now. Now, did you realize that inside your body is a giant walking pharmacy? You can make inside your body, as I mentioned earlier, just about, not all, just about all the medicines you're going to need. And where is that giant pharmacy? It's inside the lining of your blood vessels. So imagine now, if we were to take all the blood vessels in your body and lay them out flat, they would occupy the surface area larger than a tennis court. And on the lining, inside the lining of your blood vessels, are millions of microscopic medicine bottles. And those medicine bottles, they make most of the medicines you're going to need. Like, for example, medicines that lower the highs, like high blood sugar, high blood cholesterol, high blood pressure. Medicines that raise the lows, like antidepressants. Um, medicines that mellow your moods, like mood mellowers. Medicines that heal your hurts, like anti-inflammatories. So imagine inside these blood vessels are your millions and millions of medicine bottles. Now, now that you have that visual image, medicine bottles inside my blood vessels, inside the lining, here's how to tap in and open your pharmacy. Now, when we eat sticky stuff, the standard American diet, which we as doctors call the SAD diet, the standard American diet of processed foods, artificial foods, chemical foods, the foods with the three bad words on the label I mentioned earlier, high fructose corn syrup, hydrogenated, and number symbol. What happens when you put sticky stuff in your mouth, you get sticky stuff on the lining of your blood vessels. And those medicine bottles can open up. So you p picture the person who's a sticky stuff eater, their pharmacy is closed. God's design for that personal pharmacy inside is not working. Now picture the person who's a healthy eater. No sticky stuff. What diet is that person on? The real food diet. Where do they get the food? The food that swims in the sea, grows on trees, comes out of the ground. That is real food, the real food diet. If God designed our body to eat real food, if you eat real food, you get real health. It's as simple as that. So let's picture the real food eater. The real food eater, when the food comes in and gets into the bloodstream, there's no sticky stuff. So the medicine bottles can open up. So the sad diet, the person eating the standard American diet with all the sticky stuff, all those medicine bottles are closed they don't have their personal pharmacy. So they're the ones that constantly go to the doctor, doctor, what can I take? Now the healthy person, the real food diet person, when they, they are, doctor, what can I do? And what they do is they eat the right food so their medicine bottles open up and release their own medicine. Now another way to get your medicine bottles to open, open and one of the magic words of medicine. Very simple, and that is move. Our bodies were meant to move. And I know you go to the doctor and the doctor says you need to exercise more, but many doctors don't tell you why. So let's go back inside our body again. Let's go back into your own personal pharmacy, those blood vessels again. So inside your blood vessels, are those millions of microscopic medicine bottles. 
And what I'm going to mention to you now, a friend of mine, Dr. Lou Ignaro at UCLA in California, won the Nobel Prize for what you're about to hear. So when you move, when you, when you jog, when you swim, when you dance, when you just walk briskly, any movement, movement gets the blood flow faster over the medicine bottle. It creates an energy field over all those microscopic medicine bottles inside your pharmacy. And that energy field opens up the medicine bottles. I want you now to picture those millions of medicine bottles inside your bloodstream, inside the line of your arteries, they're opening up because the blood flow is making them open. Imagine when you move, it's like your, your blood is like a highway. And all those blood vessels are like cars on the highway. Now when you move, the highway automatically widens. It's like making a couple extra lanes during rush hour. And that's what movement does. Movement releases your natural internal medicines. So get moving. And, and when, you, when you really understand the beauty of God's design for our body, that God put within our body the medicines we're going to need. Unfortunately, by years of sitting too much and eating too much sticky stuff, our pharmacy is closed. What you're learning today is how to keep your pharmacy open at all ages. Now, another thing that closes your pharmacy and brings people at all ages to doctors is being overweight. But I know you're tired of all hearing about overweight, so I'm going to take a little different slant now. And, uh, and I've done this in my office. Say a person will come in for weight control counseling. And the first thing I do is I don't weigh them. And that surprises them. What? You're not going to weigh, say a, a mother would bring her teenage uh, daughter in for weight counseling. I don't weigh her. And meanwhile, the mom is saying, aren't you going to weigh her? No, 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 no. We're just going to talk a little bit. And what I do, I use one measurement. In fact, let me ask you a quiz. Suppose the, your doctor was really in a hurry one day and only had one measurement to do, only had time for one measurement, and that one measurement would, would tell the doctor most about how healthy you are. Would it be, say, electrocardiogram? Would it be a chest x-ray? Would it be measuring uh, blood cholesterol? Would it be your weight? Or would it be a tape measure to measure your waist size. If you answered waist size, you're correct. Your waist size, and this is sort of new findings now in medicine, the waist size is probably the doctor's most trusted parameter of how healthy you are. And let's, let's understand why now. Now, once upon a time, we all thought that, well, the fat we accumulate around our body that just slows us down a bit. It maybe, you know, maybe makes us a little bit tired, but no big deal. Fat is fat. Not so true. Now we know that the fat around the middle, we call it middle fat, the fat around your waist, your skirt size, your belt size, your pant size, that is a different type of fat than the fat on your cheeks or the fat on your thighs. And the fat around your middle is called, the, the term is called chemically active fat, meaning that within the fat cells around your middle, those fat cells make what we call anti-medicines. These are the medicines, the exact opposite of the medicines your personal God-given pharmacy released into your bloodstream. And these medicines, these anti-medicines from the fat around our waist, what they do, they raise your cholesterol, your blood sugar, your blood pressure, they cause diabetes, they cause cancer, they cause all the itis illnesses. I mean, we have an epidemic of itis illness. We have, we have uh, gingivitis, iritis of the eyes, 
cognitivitis, what we call Alzheimer's, we have dermatitis, we have arthritis, we have carditis, colitis, we have itis, and we're head to toe itis. In fact, in, in my office, I call them iBots, and the kids like that term. They're, they're just a walking itis. And, and what causes a lot of the itises? It's ex, extra abdominal fat. So one of the three magic words I use in my office probably 20 times a day is reduce your waist. If you can take two or three inches off your waist, you're probably going to put 20 or 30 years onto your life. In fact, there are lots of studies proving just what I said, that the leaner your waist, the longer and the healthier you're going to live. Now, I, I use the term uh, lean. Now, lean does not mean skinny, because that's not healthy all the time either. Lean means having just the right amount of body fat and body weight for your individual body type. And there are four different body types. So let's, let's, and that's why uh, the world would be a very boring place if we all looked alike. So the four body types, you have, you have what I call bananas. Bananas are the lean and tall people. Okay, the bananas are burners. They eat, they burn, they don't get fat. That's just their gene. It's not fair, but that some people are just well, bananas. Then we have the apples. The apples are sort of round in the middle. Then we have the pears who are the round at the hips. And then we have the yams. They're just big all over. All right. Now, these are all different body types. One is not better than the other. But the apples, the yams, and the pears, they have to eat more healthy food. And not as much, perhaps, as the burner, the banana. And in fact, uh, for these three body types, I give them what I call Dr. Bill's rule of twos. Now, be prepared for the simplest yet most scientific definition of how you should eat that you're about to hear. And that is the rule of twos. Eat twice as often, eat half as much, and chew twice as long. This is called grazing. Grazing is a way that we were designed to eat. We were designed to eat frequent mini meals throughout the day, not just gorge or ourselves on, on a, a couple big meals. And what, what the medic, I, I must show me the science doctor, and I'm not going to say anything to you that has not been backed up by solid science. And one of the fascinating pieces of science is that grazers are healthier than gorgers. People who eat graze on good foods, on many meals throughout the day, their blood sugar is more stable, they are they have less incidence of diabetes, cancer, all the itises, all the cardiovascular disease, all the things you don't want to get. And in fact, uh, there's an interesting study where they took two groups of people who needed to lose weight. And they put, on, put them on the same food, the same number of calories. The ones who grazed on six mini meals throughout the day lost more weight than the gorgers, the ones who ate three big meals. So, that's, that is one of the top tips I'd like to give you. And now I, I'm going to also go into with you a little changing, changes that are going on in health care. We, do, we, we doctors care about your health. And even though with all the pressures, the health care reforms, whatever you want to call it, doctors are being squeezed into having less time per patient. Now the good news is, that the patients are going to have to take more charge of their health care. So you're, don't be surprised if your doctor is start, are going to start using more motivating terms when you come in the office. So your doctor, instead of, instead of using the old wimpy term, overweight, your doctor may look at you and say, uh, Mrs. Jones, you are pre-diabetic. Now pre-diabetic and overweight medically is the same because Every overweight person will get diabetes at some time. Next month, next year, 10 years, that's just the way it is. And that's why we use the term pre-diabetic instead of overweight anymore. 
Now, there are some parents who just don't get it. And they continue feeding their kids junk food. And I tell them, if you don't buy it, the kids won't eat it. And I say to them, stop being a nutritional wimp. If you don't buy it, if you don't serve it, the kids aren't going to eat it. But if you buy it, the kids get the message, hey, if, if mom wouldn't buy it if it weren't good for me. So just, and don't, you don't have to be a short order cook. Oh, honey, I don't, uh, oh, if you don't like the, 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 the uh, salad I made, oh, I'll make you some mac and cheese. No. If you don't, this is what we, and, and we call this the we principle. But we have eight children. We, my, my Martha could never be a short order cook. And I call this the we principle. This is what we eat. This is what we believe. This is how we talk. This is how we dress. This is what we eat. End of story. If you don't like what we're serving tonight, there's the fridge, there's the pantry. But the pantry and the fridge only has real food in it. And the kids get the message. So moms and dads, grandmothers and grandfathers, all of you at all ages out there, make health your hobby. Take charge of your health. Realize that you're a giant walking pharmacy that God put within our beautiful bodies, most of the medicines we're going to ever need to live a happier, healthier, and longer life. But take care of your pharmacy. Protect it. It's in there. And I wish you all a happy, healthy, and long life. God bless you.